Well, hello, friend, and welcome to another episode of it, uh, Van Life Living in New York. For those of you that watch me, did you notice I got in a fight with a lawnmower last night? <laughs> On yesterday's video, I told you all that I had this long hair, and I was going to cut it all off, and I did. And well, I was debating it yesterday. I just went home and took the buzz to it and started hacking it before I could change my mind. Because, you know, I'm a person that originally was very egotistical. My thought of selfishness, my thought of Satan had a lot of strength over me. And, um, well, I have to always be giving my thoughts to God. And I knew the, the name of this video this morning before I got here. And it's why Christ is right and Christianity is wrong, right? So I am going to talk a little bit about that here in just a minute or so. Because, uh, you know, that's what's really important in my life is this, this love of Christ. This thought of God that's in my head, right? Because my Father's everywhere. His consciousness is beyond understanding. He's everything and nothing everywhere and nowhere all at the same time. He's in your head and he's in mine. And every thought I have, he sees, right? And I was struggling with that this morning because yesterday I was at the doctor's for some stuff. Plus, I he made me do a video that I didn't even, uh, well, he doesn't make me do anything, but he, I get on here and speak from the Spirit. And sometimes by the time I get done talking, I have a real hard time posting them because some of the things he sometimes has me say. And yesterday, I didn't even post it till this morning because I so badly did not want to post that video. <laughs> right? But I have a choice. I have to follow my selfishness, which is my fear, and, and let fear overcome me and be worried about what everybody's going to think of me, or I follow the love of Christ and I do what the Holy Spirit asked me to do. And he asked me to t say some hard things on here sometimes, friend. I'm not lying to you. But that's because it, the hour's late, friend, and, and there's a lot of things going on, and anybody that's half awake is seeing it. And, and really, friend, the, the brides of Christ are waking up. The virgins have, have been waking from their slumber. So if you don't have oil for your lamp, you might want to go get some, because once everybody's awake, this is not going down good. And I'm talking about here in America especially, but it's going to be the same in a lot of places as this goes. So anyway, Christ is right because everything he said was true. And I'm a firm believer in that. I've been telling you that Jesus said... I got a fly bothering me, friend. Something. They like my new short haircut, I guess. <laughs> They're like, oh, look, a nest. <laughs> I'm not used to having short hair. This short, anyway. And I've never cut my own hair, so I mean, I just hacked it. it but it looks all right. It ain't too bad. But he told me I have to leave the beard, right? The beard stays. That's kind of my commitment to God. I couldn't even grow one until he called me into the wilderness. And all of a sudden, poof, I could grow a beard for the first time in my life before you'll see pictures of me with a goatee. Anyway, so everything Jesus said is true. Jesus said that the kingdom would not be said to be here or there, but the kingdom of God would be said to be within you. And I'm telling you, it's within you because it's within me. Now, even this morning, I was struggling because of these things. That they actually gave me new medication for my blood pressure, and they gave me some antibiotics because I got bit by a tick, which ticks don't normally like me, but for some reason, this one was desperate to eat because he got on me, and, well, they were worried about that I was going to get Lyme's disease or something, so they gave me this antibiotic. But it's kind of had my head feeling weird. I'm not sure whether it was the blood pressure medication or the antibiotic. I don't know. It just kind of had me... And I keep my thoughts captive, friend. It says right in the Bible that. that didn't, Jesus didn't say it, I don't think. It was somewhere in the New Testament, I'm pretty sure. But it does talk about keeping your thoughts captive. And Jesus did talk about that because he t said, spend a lot of time in your secret place. Well, that's, you know, giving your thoughts to God. And the more you do that, the more... And when you fall in line with the things he asked you to do and you stop sinning and doing the things that are causing suffering then you can spend more and more time with God. And that's what I do. I spend a lot of time with God because I am the prodigal son, right? I am the wilderness goat of Yom Kippur. Nobody believes that. 
but it's true. And I have absolute intent on dragging that thought of Satan straight back into hell to where it came from. So make no mistake about that. And that was one of the things I was talking about in the video yesterday and what exactly that looks like. So understand that, friend. I have, my body will hold out until it doesn't, but I've never had intentions on surviving this. Jesus said, he who saves his life will lose it, but he who loses it for my sake will gain it. So I have no intentions on surviving this. I'm, gonna, I'm on the battlefield with the dragon, and I'm expecting the riders of the beast or the, the church itself to come murder me before this is all said and done. Now, if my father has a different plan, that's great, because I really am not this courageous dude. I don't like the idea of dying, especially some horrible way. But in the beginning of all this, I made my father a promise. He showed me a death and asked me if I'd agree. I, I was literally standing out one night in, back in 2008, and I said, I don't care if you whip, beat, and crucify me. You give me the truth or you kill me now. And a death showed up in my mind, and the Holy Spirit showed up clearer than it's ever been and said, do you agree? And I didn't want to agree to that death, friend, but I did. And now because I did... You don't say yes, you don't make a commitment to God and then back out. So if that's what i got to have, I'll take it. Because the kingdom I found because of it is wonderful, even though it took me a long time to find it because I failed like I do everything, friend. I've been failing forward fast my whole life. I failed at everything. The only thing I've successfully completed is finding the Holy Spirit within me and becoming in relationship with my Father and even in times like this morning where I'm not doing well with it, he gets me through it, right? And then he led me to go listen to Karen Wheaton this morning. And she's a person that's helping the family members of prodigal children, you know, that are lost to addiction and things. I'm one of those people, friend, that I, I come from hell. So when I tell you I'm the wilderness goat, I'm telling you I am from hell. I'm not lying to you. But you all think hell is there. But it's not. It's here. Just like the kingdom, right? Because Jesus said the kingdom was here. And all of his parable about the kingdom is like statements were about the kingdom here. And I've been telling you that in previous videos. So I sure hope you're going to go look at that. But what I really wanted to get to talking to you about today was how you can know that Christ was right and Christianity's wrong. And I'm not trying to say that everything they're saying is wrong. Just like this girl Karen Wheaton, I'm just telling you about that she's, she's got different stuff on Facebook and YouTube and stuff like me, but she's completely different and she's into the church and all of that, and I love her to death and I love all these other good Christians, Troy Black, I mean there's just all kinds of people I love that I listen to online, Chris Garcia, um, and Troy Black, I'll be quite honest with you, believes in this once saved, always saved, and I'm always telling you that's an outright lie. But he's not meaning it the way you're thinking. He's trying to keep people from being afraid that truly are seeking the kingdom. So, but I know what he's saying, but it always comes out wrong. And to anybody that doesn't understand what Christ said is going to be mistaken about what he said. And then they'll think they're going to be okay and enter the kingdom. But they're not carrying a white stone and they don't know they even are supposed to carry a white stone. Right in Revelation, it told you that the... That the ticket to the kingdom is, is a white stone, and if the only person that will know they're carrying it is the one carrying it. So nobody else can tell you whether you've got the kingdom. You go read what Christ said, and then you will know whether you've got the kingdom or not. But you're going to have to understand parables. He said that he was going to speak in parables so you don't understand lest you turn and be forgiven. Now in the King James, I think it's ever hearing and not understanding. But understand that meant that if you really wanted to know my father, you really get to know the son. And if you're not willing to put in the investment time to get to know those parables, you weren't willing to put my father ahead of the world, the son ahead of the world. So I'm just telling you truth here, friend. This is truth. This is why Christianity's wrong and why I'm always calling them Pharisees and snakes because they're always wiggling half a tongue. They're lying to you. So, and I'm going to give you another thing to know. I, there is no eternal hell. I don't care what everybody else says. If you go to the church in Philadelphia, uh, the letter that John wrote in Revelation that came straight from Christ, those words are in red. Get a red letter edition of the Bible and read red. Right there in the letter to the church of Philadelphia, it says, 
to he that overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will go out no more. In, in the King James, it's no more out, instead of out no more. It doesn't matter. All the Bibles say the same thing. It either says no more out, out no more, not again, but understand he's saying that you will not leave the kingdom again if you overcome. Are you getting that, friend? That means not again. That does not mean that you've never been, that you're born here, you get one shot at this, and then you get in there. So you can call me a liar. You can be a snake. But those are the words of Christ. They're in the words in red. They're in your Bible. And if that statement falls, your entire Bible crumbles with it. Right? So I'm not here to make you feel all warm and fuzzy and believe that you've got this white stone. Only you know, friend. You have to go read what Jesus said. If he said, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. You can't call him a liar. That's not once saved, always saved. Right? He told you that he was the vine and we are the branches. And that if we're fruitful, he will prune us and make us even more fruitful in him. Right? Which means we'll give even more love, joy, and peace to other people and bring him even greater crop. But if we didn't, if we didn't, if we buried our treasure, that the dead limbs at the end of the age was going to be cut off and gathered up and thrown into the furnace, right? So if you're not attached, you you don't even have to be cut off because you're not even attached to the vine because you didn't do what Jesus asked. So you might say, I believe in Jesus, but you don't know Jesus because you didn't read what Jesus said. You don't know him. How can you know him if you don't read what he said and listen to what he told you? You've got all these people that are giving you contradicting stuff. I mean, you know, you have all these near-death experiences. I get it, friend. I've had one. But mine doesn't line up with everyone else's. So I'm not here to talk to you about that. What I can tell you that will line up for a Christian is that Bible. So you either believe what Christ said and read or you don't. But if you don't, you're not going to enter the kingdom because Jesus himself said that if you don't eat his flesh and which is his word, and drink his blood, which is his spirit, that you will by no means enter the kingdom. He is the spirit of love. He is the spirit of the law. Moses came to create the law. Christ came to teach you how to rise in the spirit of the law, which is the spirit of love. So if you're not interested in becoming in the spirit of love and choosing love over selfishness, Christ over Satan, God over the world, well, then you're not interested in my Father's kingdom anyway. Because only the people that are ready for that are the ones that are going to enter that kingdom. So I'm here telling you the truth. So that's why Christianity is wrong. They won't tell you all this. Everything I'm telling you is right in the Bible, and it's in the words in red. The only thing isn't is where I said, hold your thoughts captive or whatever. But that doesn't even matter. Get what I'm saying? I'm not saying the Bible's wrong. I'm telling you you've got a bunch of snake Pharisees that love their control and power. Or if they don't love it and aren't abusing it, they also are mid-level management in a corporation you call church, which is you've been taught one thing and the people above them have or know the same thing you know. If that preacher ever says anything different than the rest of you agree with, you will cast him from his vineyard, his place where he, help, where he teaches you. Then he will lose his finances and he will lose his status. So I would never be a preacher of a church because I'd have to lie to you to make you like me and I have no interest in you liking me if you don't love me for the truth. That's all I'm here for. I'm here to tell you the truth. I don't care whether you believe. If you want to believe in eternal hell, great, wonderful. I don't care. But that's not going to give you the excuse on not to do things Christ said. Because, see, that's what happens. I forgave those that condemned me. Well, and I had people that hurt me bad. So when I forgave them, is my love greater than God's? Is my forgiveness greater than God's? No, it is not. If your child denied you, would you set them on fire? I hope not. Would my father? Right, you all are listening to a religion that makes zero sense. Christ is the word made flesh. Eat his words. He said he was going to reveal secrets that have been hidden since the foundation of the world. 
That is what my king said. He is my king. Not Christianity, not any preacher, not any priest, not this government that sold itself to Satan or the corporations that are Satan himself. I'm here to drag that dragon straight back into hell because you are using it to murder your kids. And I'm just telling you the truth. A publicly traded corporation is nothing but a set of laws on paper. That's it, friend. It doesn't exist. Your Supreme Court and Citizens United versus the Federal Election Commission gave them the rights of United States citizens and sold your politicians into slavery and you and your children along with it. And the World Economic Forum, along with BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street, I want you to go look. Stop calling me a liar about things and you go find a little bit of backbone. If you've got this much backbone, you go look at the interview that I'm going to put in the description of this video. Because he tells you some of the things that's going on. It's far greater than that. I've been showing you different things and telling you different things. If you don't wake up and find the kingdom now, you will not receive it in your death. If you're not carrying a white stone soon, you're going to not have a white stone. I'm not a liar, friend. I'm telling you the truth. If you go look on Yahoo Finance, you will see that BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street own all the other corporations in America. They own all your car companies, your pharmaceutical companies, your everything companies. You are a slave to the unholy trinity. And Larry Fink, the CEO and co-founder of BlackRock, is on the board of the World Economic Forum. Don't you call me a liar. You take your spineless jelly body and you go look on the World Economic Forum's website and see if Larry Fink's name isn't there. Then go look and see if Larry Fink isn't the owner of BlackRock. Then go look and see if Yahoo Finance doesn't show you that Larry Fink owns America and they're buying up your real estate because that's their future slave housing. Friend, I love you. But you are not going to just let them murder you off like this. That's the truth. So I am here to live or die, to go to my cross like Christ told me to. But you will not murder your children and call yourselves righteous. That's disgusting. So you all are going to make a new choice and do what Christ asked you to do from the beginning. You need to feed the hungry. I'm not saying there's a way out of this. I'm saying that if every Christian became Christ-like, we would bring the light and we would turn this. And even if they crashed the system, we wouldn't end up devouring each other like we're going to because they've got us stuck in selfishness. Selfishness is of Satan. Love is of Christ. Selfishness keeps everything, right? It's all me, 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 me. Christ and the thought of love gives to another what it would seek for itself. Because I want you to find your eternal life. I'm telling you the truth. And the truth is hard. But it's the truth nonetheless. And any person that comes on here and calls me a liar without looking into that, you're a coward and a snake. And I'm telling you so. You're a jellyfish. you got no spine. You're willing to call me a hypocrite or call me a liar, but you won't look into anything because that's what happens every time these Christians come on here calling me a liar. They're a bunch of spineless jellyfish that don't have the courage to look at the truth of what Jesus said. Jesus told you he was cutting the dead limbs off. He, he's the one who told you you had to carry a white stone, which is a ticket to the kingdom, because in the old days they didn't have paper tickets. That's what they used for you to get into a theater or a coliseum. I'm not the only one that can tell you that. I actually learned that through someone else. Um, Brandon Robbins taught me that. That man's teaching you all kinds of stuff about what things meant versus what we thought they meant. Did you know that spare the rod, spoil the child? Did you know that a rod was a Hebrew measuring stick? So he wasn't telling you to beat your children to death. He was telling you to give them measure. Because if you don't give them measure, then when they get out into the world, just because you gave them no law, they'll be lawless, and then they're going to get thrown in prison, right? They're, they're going to get treated poorly. People aren't go they don't know how to respect people. So I'm on here being disrespectful to the church because the church is not telling the truth. So it's not that I'm being disrespectful to you. The Christians are the ones who brought me the kingdom. But it was the ones that are out in the trenches. They're the ones that drug me up out of hell. My father sent me to the right people. 
There are people that are so Christ-like. There's one guy I almost had to go look and see. I, I, I had to wonder whether this was Christ reincarnated and he's already here. This man was so loving and forgiving and compassionate in everything he does. And I got to bear witness to him. And he changed my life along with a lot of other people. So my father, I love my father because I love the children that he sent me. I don't think he's a prodigal child, that guy. I don't care whether he is or not. I'm a prodigal child, right? But he came and saved me from myself, friend. I got to go to some trainings that he used to do. I got to go sit on a board with him. I got to learn from him. He didn't know it, but I, he was my mentor. I was watching every move and every word he ever said. And I listened to him talk to other Christians about Jesus. And even though I had given up on Jesus, he convinced me that I had made a wrong decision. I hadn't given up on Jesus. I had given up on God because they put me in the psychiatric hospital because I received the Holy Spirit. And when I, the Holy Spirit started telling me the things that it told me, everybody started calling me crazy and convinced me that I was not well. So I decided that since it was always God that everybody declared me not well for, I quit seeking God for a while. But I couldn't help it. I had to go back. Friend, atheists, they don't know nothing. Nothing created everything and it did a perfect job. I've got all kinds of stuff on the Proof of God playlist on YouTube. Please go look at it. Put some logic to your insanity, friend. This world is insane. Christ, he's truly sane. But if you think this world's sane, then you think Christ is insane. So if you're a Christian that says that this world is sane, you're insane. You're insane with the world because you think that all this murdering and lying and being selfish is going to create a better world, and it's not. This world is toast, friend. You know it and I know it. This nation has stacked up its sins till it reached the throne of heaven. They're there, friend. Look at what we're doing to our kids. This is the Valley of Gehenna. Father, have mercy on us, but give us some sort of judgment so we wake up and stop murdering our children. I don't want to see a judgment, friend, but I'm tired of watching you let your kids die because you're worshiping Satan, which is a publicly traded corporation. That is what's in Revelation. The rider comes to drag it into hell. I'm here to take you out, dragon. You're going down. Whether I live or die, my arrows have been launched, my brother. So you corporate elite that are sons of Satan and Satan worshipers, you can either make a new choice, repent, and still enter my Father's kingdom, or go into your underground arcs and get sealed in your tombs. I'm not a liar. You can tell me whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. You can lock me in prison, psychiatric hospitals, and nail me to a cross, friend. You ain't taking my father's name off of his own creation. So those of you that want it, I suggest you put my father's mark on your forehead. Because the time is here, friend. There's a great divide coming. And I'll do it myself if you won't help me. And right now, the reason I sometimes get this where I, I struggle with my faith is nobody really listens to me right and I say all this and I know it's true because the Holy Spirit has revealed it to me I know the truth I've been telling you the truth but I have no proof it is and everybody just thinks I'm crazy as always right but I have faith in God I have faith in Christ and I have faith in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit gives me everything I know you won't be able to prove I know what I know but I know what I know and I know that a publicly traded corporation is the thought of Satan made flesh. And because we keep, you won't stop them because your stocks have become your bonds. That's why Christians have become jellyfish, spineless. Because you know that if you actually stand up for what's right, it's going to cost you. But if you don't, they're going to kill you off anyway. Go look at what the World Economic Forum's been saying. They told you that, that this many people is unviable and most people are useless in their post-human uh, age where computers and AI runs everything 
and their only solution for the time being is to put you all on drugs and video games until they get around to murdering you all off, which they're going to do when they crash the economy because right now they're killing off all your cattle, your farms, and everything. And if you don't know that, you need to wake up. It's everywhere. This isn't just one video I've watched. It's, it's an entire trend. Not just this nation, across Europe and Africa. Friend, they are setting you up. You and your kids are going down. Are you going to just go down? You better at least teach them Jesus and they get them to carry a white stone. Or they're getting cast into the darkness with you, friend. I'm not a liar. I didn't do this. We all did this together. We're all guilty of it. I'm not blaming you. I've got to take the blame myself. I'm a prodigal son. I was one of those out there being as selfish as anybody. I was drinking, getting high, going to sex clubs. I, friend, I'm disgusting. I just don't know what to tell you, but I've repented, right? And so now my father's cleaned me. And it doesn't mean that my thoughts are perfect. It means that every time I have a bad thought, I take it to God. When I was struggling this morning with faith and depression was wanting to set in on me, I kept going back to God. I'm like, Lord, he's like, you know, all you have to do is keep these thoughts captive, Jason. You know they don't have any real meaning. This isn't about how you feel. It's about who you are. And if you keep your faith in me and keep your eye on me, this feeling will pass. And it did. And I couldn't wait to get out here to do a video because they always strengthen my faith. Whether I'm saying what you want to or not, it strengthens my face, faith because I've been a coward my entire life, hiding in the darkness. And my Father has given me courage that is not mine. He has given me love that is not mine. I love you not because I have the power to love you, but because the Father, through the Son, has the power to love you for me. <laughs> right? Of myself, I am nothing. It is the Father who doeth the works. Not even the words I speak are on my behalf, but on behalf of the Father who sent me. And I'll say it. These preachers won't because they don't even know what, whether they're saying is true. I know in my heart I'm right, friend. You can nail me up for my truth. My truth is worth living for, and it's worth dying for. And you're just not going to leave all these people out there suffering, not believing in God because of the insanity of the church. It's just not happening. I will rip every church you've got down brick by brick until you guys repent and start telling the truth of what Christ said and start feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, and visiting the sick in prison. There are Christians out there doing it. For you, I am sorry I am here doing what I'm doing. But you help me get your, the rest of your congregations doing what they promised my father they were going to do from the beginning, or he's going to cast these wolves in sheep's clothing straight into hell just like they deserve because they will not choose love over selfishness. I know you love their money, and you have to glorify them so they'll give you money so that you can pay your church's bills. The church age BS is over, friend. You either straighten these churches out or just let them all fall. But you either get to the truth of Christ, you start teaching the truth so that people will turn, or I'll rip every one of them down. These priests that are out molesting children, do you think they know my father? Do you think a degree gave them anything? Nothing, friend. They don't know my father. Do you think the people they're teaching God know anything about God? Of course not, or else they'd have known them by their fruit long before that. So I'm here to tell you the church is insane just like the world. Stop looking to be like the world and the church and start to look like Christ. That's what he said. He said, call no man teacher. I'm your teacher. So you make him your teacher. He said, a student is not greater than his teacher. It's enough to be like him. So are you like him. It's not perfection. But your mustard seed's got to turn into a mustard tree. If not, well, then you, you fell, you've been a dead limb. Your seed died. You know, it fell on the path. Satan came along and ate it. It fell in the brambles. The world choked it out. It fell in shallow soil, and because the sh soil, which is our mind, was so shallow, it died. I've been all these things, friend. My father put me through hell so that I could know what Jesus was talking about in his parables. But now I finally, over after a long time, fell in fertile soil, and I'm staying there this time. I'm just not going to quit. Just like Karen Wheaton said, don't quit. 
I'm coming for you, Lord. <laughs> I'm going for you, Lord. Right? And I want you to do the same. But that means be rising in the spirit of love. If you're going to be in the spirit of selfishness and sit in your churches, I'll tear them down. Get that. Get that. Please get that. Because you ain't stopping me. I'm on a rampage. I'm the prodigal son. The wilderness goat. I speak with a whole tongue. I will slash with love and truth. But you're not going to do this love and lies. You're going to get to the truth of what Christ said. You all are going to make these red letter churches or they're coming down. Stop embarrassing my father and making him make you pay twice the debt, you Pharisees. You owe twice the debt, just as Christ said. You said that you were righteous, and then the, the outside of the cup isn't even clean anymore, friend. Yes, it's full of dead bones and everything unclean, but your priests are getting caught molesting children, and they're flying around in private jets and doing prosperity gospel. If you can't see how sick and disgusting the church has become, you're just not getting it. If you won't clean it up, I'm tearing it down. I'm asking every one of you out there to start doing it with me. I never ask you to share my videos, but I'm asking you to share and like my videos. Because it's time. I, I've always kept this quiet, but I'm telling you, you want, you want the church to straighten out? If you're an atheist and you hate religion, like me, a Christian hates religion, you share my videos. You make these people clean up their house. They should be ashamed of themselves the way they, this has been going on. There's forgiveness for everybody. My father loves every last one of his children, even his atheist children, even his Buddhist children, even his Muslim children. But if they do not accept Christ because you don't make him look appealing enough, he can't let him into the, enter the kingdom. And because you won't do anything to become a fruitful limb, you're getting cast into the darkness with him. Hell was never going to be there. It's always been coming here. Not because my father brought it. He told you, what you loose on earth, you loose in heaven. What you bind on earth, you bind in heaven. Look at what we've let loose, friend. We've let loose hell on earth. And you want to blame my father for it. Shame on you. This is a Christ revolution time, if there ever was one. So it's time. Stand with me or stand against me, friend. But you're going to stand. And you're going to stand for Christ. I hate when I get upset like this. But I'm really not upset. Because to tell you the truth, I'm still in the kingdom. In fact, I'm in more joy than when I started because I get to be honest. I'm such a coward. that I. That's the reason I didn't want to put that video on yesterday. That's why it took me till this morning to do it. It's the reason I was having a depressive moment. My thought of fear and selfishness and... Just like this haircut. You know, I always want you guys to, to like me. But the truth is, that's not my business. I'm not here to make you like me. I'm here to tell you the truth that my Father gives me. And if you love the truth that He gives me, praise God for it. To God the glory. But if you don't like it, it's not my problem. But if I don't call the church out, and I don't call people spineless jellyfish, they're not going to listen. People need to understand what's going on. You need to know... That what you loose on earth, you loose in heaven. And because you're loosing this in heaven, my Father's going to give you what you're given. So dead limbs are going to find themselves in a very bad place. So it's time for you to go read what Jesus said and get to understand what he said. Because he told you those that did not forgive, he was going to cast into prison to pay all that's due. He didn't say for eternity. The word eternity used in the Bible was aeon. It was actually used in multiple other places where it had nothing to do with forever. So that was a mistranslation. However, I'm not telling you that that was necessarily a mistake because my father had to maintain the law so that those of you that choose to could rise in the spirit of love. But if you haven't rose in the spirit of love, now's the time because if you don't, you're not entering my father's kingdom. That's a fact. That's the truth. That's what Christ told you. Not the Pharisees. They're liars and snakes. But that's what Christ said. He spoke with a whole tongue, friend. He went to his cross. I'm going to mine. Are you going to yours? Are you, do you have eternal life? Do you want that white stone? 
then get to loving your neighbor as yourself. Start forgiving like you said you would. I'm not mad at any of you. I love you all. But I'm not going to let you cast yourself into the darkness while you cast my father's other children into the darkness because you're too scared to go out and do anything that Christ asked. Because you're too busy being stuck on some thought system that some liar gave you at church. I have no interest in your churches. I have interest in you entering my Father's kingdom right here, right now, by becoming a mustard tree that gives shade and rest to your neighbor, which is my neighbor too. So let's get this love thing going on. Stop listening to the church lie. You can use their money. You can gather with them for love. But don't fall into their insanity. Instead, you choose Christ over the world, choose love over selfishness, and the kingdom you seek, you will find. You will find it right here, right now. That's a promise. But it is about love. So if you don't want love, you don't want my Father's kingdom anyway. So it's really a, t a time for you to choose. Do you want love? Do you want God? Or do you want selfishness in the world, which is Satan? These are the choices that Christ gave you from the very start, and they just are not telling you the truth. So I'm asking you to go get a red-letter edition of the Bible and read what Jesus said in red, and you'll see that everything I've said, he said first. All right? So just know that I love you because my Father loves you. And may God bless you and yours.